just bought a 1999 Yamaha VMAX 500 for a smoking deal. She's in pretty decent shape. Track is friggin' mint, bumpers aren't even torn off. Someone did fart on the seat. Throttle isn't sticking. It's got just a hair over 4,300 miles. Motor looks pretty clean. Upgraded plastic skis. And the worst rusted out trailing arms I've ever seen in my life. You're kidding me. <laughs> Check this out. Look at that. His rusted out trailing arm just snapped clean off. And now the only other thing wrong with it is it doesn't run. Look at this beauty, like a black stallion all shined up now. 99 Yamaha VMAX 500. I'm no stranger to these motors, no stranger to this body style. I've had three in the past, I actually had a 500. I had about seven minutes by the time I got to this guy's place to look it over, load it on the trailer and leave because I was super late for an appointment. But I took the chance and I bought this for $325. So now let's see if I did good on my money or if I failed. So now I'm looking it over and seeing a, a few more things. The first thing that I noticed is this crack on the gauge right here. And if we pop it open, I can almost guarantee you we are gonna see some water sitting in the tank. Oh yeah. Oh, that's ice. <laughs> Legit ice, man. And over the course of eight years, it probably just dripped and dripped and creating a nice pool. I did notice they had the gasoline line shut off, which is great. It has oil in it, always a good sign to see. It's got coolant, it pulls over pretty nice, it's got good compression, got high hopes on this thing. I'm taking a huge risk on this, but I love these sleds, they're super reliable. In fact, I put a little gasoline down the cylinders and she popped and fired for one second and that's all I needed to know, to know that the motor is not junk. So order of operations is we gotta take this tank off and then get all that water out, get the bad gas, if there is gas in there, and then we can start working our way towards the front where we'll probably have to clean the carbs and uh, we'll just go from there because that's really where you start on these things. I have to take the seat off first. That's a, oh, I just rolled that right through. <laughs> the seat cover's so rotten, I just pulled the buttons off. Yeah, she's gonna need a new seat too eventually. They trailered this thing without a salt shield and the snow piled up in the front of the sled and they let it just sit there and all that salt just started decaying the steel. You may not be able to see them, but those bolts one on each side right there that connect the seat to the frame. Absolutely impossible to get to because they're so rusted. I don't have to actually take the seat off to get this tank off. There are two bolts for the tank right here. One on each side. I'm hoping there's nothing in the middle here. There we go. Should be completely detached. We got the oil reservoir and the coolant reservoir. Once I get those off, then I should be able to snake it out of there. If not, I'll have to work on this seat and peel it back like a sardine can or something. There it is. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. You hear that ice in there? So our next act is to get the slush puppy out of this tank. Thankfully there's not a whole lot in here, so I think it's mostly ice actually. Okay, so we're getting real hot water. This is not boiling, of course, but my hot water heater works fantastic, so this is pretty friggin' hot. I'm gonna throw it in there to try to melt all the ice. I don't think there's any gasoline in there. Good morning, okay, so last night, after we dumped out the water, I put it next to this cheap heater from Walmart. It seems to have done the job because I don't see any moisture inside the tank anymore. Carburetor time. It's too bad our uh, carb doctor, Valhalla Mike, isn't around. He'd love this one. Oh, yeah. Get our boot clamps. Get our throttle cable off here. Look at that, my friends. That right there is 100% a mouse nest. It should pop right out now. Oh, yeah. Look at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, this is, this is insane. Look at that. We got some little mouse snacks in there too. Oh, that feels hard. That's a dead mouse in there. Oh my God, you seeing this? Look how nasty that is. I don't know what that is. I did my best to clean out this air box, hit it with a vacuum again, took some rags, some water, cleaned it real nice, looking pretty slick. So now that that's done, we can go start working on our carburetor over here, which I think is gonna cause us some issues. I think we may need a rebuild kit in our future, but let's take it inside and see what we get into. Funny enough, I already had the table set up in my kitchen here for uh, cleaning carburetors. When I was taking these off, I was uh, 
you know, of course, fondling the bowls down here, and I did feel a little stickiness, which is a telltale sign of old nasty gas. It smells like mouse nest in here. Oh, there's oil. That smells so bad. Look at that. Can you see that? All that grime in there, sludge. Break open number two here. Yep, same thing. Oh yeah, definitely gonna need more carb cleaner for this project. This is probably the second worst set of carbs I've ever seen next to the MXZ we have in the garage. Look at these things, they're friggin' disgusting. Okay. Okay, look inside there. We got chunks of mouse nests that have been just jammed inside there. Trying to run out of carb cleaner again. Trying to get enough in here to let these soak. Hands down, spent the most time on these carbs than any other carbs. We're talking probably two hours cleaning these things, cleaning all the ports, getting the jets cleared out. It was wicked clogged. Everything was pretty much just jam packed with gunk. So I'm pretty confident this is as clean as it can get without uh, doing a complete rebuild on it. Putting the carbs in the boots is always a tough challenge. Oh, man, these are stiff. We got our carbs back in there. We got everything all hooked up the way that it should be. So now we just gotta throw the tank back on, hook it up, get some fresh gas, and uh, it's almost a moment of truth. Take our faulty gas cap off, just to make things easier. Hey! I only moderately destroyed the seat a little bit more. We now interrupt this program to bring you a new friggin' trailing arm. To replace the cross bucket I broke off when I was unloading this thing. This came off of a 2000 Phaser 500. Looks like at one time they wanted 125 bucks for it. But I reached out to my buddy Hunter. He got it to me for 75 bucks. It's not brand new, of course, but it'll do the job. Just make sure she matches up here. Yeah, that'll do it, I think. What the heck? All right, we finally got it. I had to get Big Bertha on the job. We'll help things out here a little bit. As expected, we are fighting a bit of rust. There's that. Now, the only thing that's holding it together is our shock bolt. Which, oddly enough, is the hardest one to get out. I can't get this bolt off for the life of me because this bracket's in the way. So I'm just going to come up to the top of the shock, take the bolt off here, and I'll drop the whole thing, and we should be golden. It's free. Ugh. Wow. All right, I had to get outside for a little bit more space to work on this thing, just to get this one bolt off, but let's just admire how rusty this thing is. Look at that. Hole straight through it. Unbelievable. I have never seen a trailing arm so bad in my life. I also had to smash this bracket down to get that bolt out, by the way. Had to get a bigger hammer, too. And I broke it off. Saw that coming. Man, I blasted this thing with penetrating oil but it's just so seized on there for all the friggin' rust. Okay, I bought a punch, got some grease while I was at it. We're gonna hammer this thing right through here and get this bolt out. I'm gonna smash you, smash you, smash you, smash you. There we go. Finally. So I actually need to get this whole piece right here, this collar, because the bolt is absolutely rusted to it. So that might be tricky to find. I'm sure online I can get it, but of course, I gotta wait five days before I can see it. So maybe we'll go to the hardware store again. See if I can find something that'll fit. I don't know. So I did some searching online and they want anywhere from 30 to $70 for the bushing and the bowl and there's the washers and it's just absolutely ridiculous. So I went down to my local hardware store, talked to the guy behind the counter. He goes out in the junkyard and finds a steel tube. We cut it down to size. I slap some washers together and find a bowl. It may not be the prettiest looking thing, but I believe this will work. Pretty much all the weight is gonna be on this shaft right here, and this is solid friggin' steel. It's not going anywhere, so. Oh, look at that. That is perfection right there. Boom, baby. Honestly, though, I think it's gonna do the job real well. I'm gonna clean this up real good since we got fresh grease. The hardware store special, the $1.33 mod. 
That's going to be perfect. Slapping on the finishing touches here, boys. We're almost done. Look at this. It's friggin' beautiful. I love when something comes together. Ha, 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 oh. We did it. And this, 100%, is going on the wall of shame next to everything else and mice poop. All right, friends. We got it all hooked up. Got my lines on there. This one, for some reason, was such a pain in the butt. I actually ended up cutting myself. And you can see a piece of my flesh on that piece of metal right there. And now it's time to throw in some gasoline. Non-ethanol gasoline, by the way. One thing I am nervous about, as always, because I have trauma, is a mouse nest in the exhaust. I've got a lot of PTSD. So fresh gas in the tank. We got everything hooked up. We got our plug wires back on here. We're gonna turn on the gas right now. Let's kill switch. We'll do some choke. We'll do halfway. Make sure the key's turned on. And here goes nothing. Man, I get excited over this stuff. This is what I live for. I'm scared. I don't know why I'm scared. God, this is gonna be like top 10 workouts of all time or something. I almost think I see gas down in the lines right there, like very close to the carburetor. Okay, don't yell at me in the comments, but I'm gonna throw a little liquid encouragement in here just to start, start her up a little quicker. Prime her up, if you will. Just a little. Whoop. So it's definitely gonna start on this. <clears throat> it's just a matter of if we can get the gas to run through the lines when this does start. That will be the question. Ready? I hope we got enough gas in here. We just might not have enough gas in here. So I guess I'm gonna go get some gas at the store and we'll just fill this thing up, I guess, or at least half, half a tank. Enough so that it can actually do its job, you know? Five gallons of gas. All right, explosions happening. Here we go. Come on, baby. Come on. Twenty-five bucks. We got this thing running. 